Uh, Sandra Corcoran, I'm a director and owner of Penai Cycles in Bradford. We're a retail uh, shop and we manufacture uh, a Pennine brand of steel bicycle frame, which we have done for 68 years. So very passionate about all things to do with cycling. And we also sponsor a cycling club, VC Bradford. So again, it's about encouraging women to join a cycle club as well as looking after women when they come into the cycle shop. So you're at the conference today, did you, uh, are you going to take away anything that uh, you, you're, you're going to implement or found, you found interesting? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the speakers referred to um, some cycle shops not being user friendly for women and even though we, we know that we are, um, because it's not just myself who works in the business, my daughter does. Um, so we've got that experience and, and know what it feels like to come into a shop and not feel welcome. So we do always particularly try harder to uh, make women feel welcome to come into the shop. And we do get it where it was said at the conference where women will say to their husbands, are oh, you going to the shop? I'll wait in the car. And it's how we actually encourage people to, you know, women particularly, to come actually into a bicycle shop rather than shop online or think they're not nice, friendly places. And, and as far as Bradford goes, would you say it's a cycle-friendly city? It's a hilly city, so it's got a disadvantage compared to York. Um, but when you're used to, you know, my husband's a Leeds lad, so he's used to commuting between Leeds and Bradford when he, before we were married, but now he rides his bicycle every day and doesn't own a car. Um, there, there are bike lanes, but there could be improvements. We've got the superhighway, which is coming from Leeds to Bradford, so, and there are more and more cycle uh, paths opening up. There's one where I live at Cullingworth, so that was great for me to go on and feel in a safe environment that you didn't have the traffic to contend with, because I think it is about educating car drivers to be aware of cyclists on, on the road. Most cyclists are car drivers themselves, so, they do have an understanding of the, yes. <laughs> the highway code. <laughs> so, um, with the Tour de France having been here last year, have you seen any impact of that, and particularly on perhaps women in cycling? Have you seen any, any effect? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're still buzzing. Uh, everybody has a story to tell of where they were watching the Tour de France when it came to Yorkshire and who would have expected that that would have happened. We've still got our bunting up, obviously the Tour of Yorkshire starts tomorrow and it's coming back to Bradford uh, area parts of it on, on, on Sunday. Uh, it's actually my birthday on Sunday, so that's a nice, uh, a nice thing to be, uh, you know, involved in. Uh, but yet, yeah, more and more people are taking up cycling because it's cool now. I think since the Olympics and, and cycling did so well in the Olympics, it's become quite cool now to ride a bike and trendy. It. It's not sort of looked down or you can't afford a car or something that you know you, you shouldn't be riding a bicycle. So I think that's people health and fitness as well. People are looking. Uh, Particularly uh, women I speak to who've never ridden a bicycle or when they were little they might have fallen off the bicycle and then the mother instilled a fear in them, you're never going to ride a bicycle again. So lots of people are wanting to learn to ride and overcome that fear. So we are getting, you know, all ages and I think more and more parents now are also uh, realising that the children do need to have some exercise and if it starts with the young girls you know they're, they're going to keep on cycling and never stop and I think there is you know uh, the likes of Victoria Pendleton and Lizzie Armistead you know the top cyclists have actually given that aspiration for youngsters to actually well that could be me if you've got that dream dream big and you could be a pro cyclist I think particularly for women there's a lot more opportunity so you're a keen cyclist yourself, do you, do you get out, what sort of cycling do you do? I'm a fair, I'm a, I have to admit I'm a fair weather, <laughs> uh, unlike my husband will ride in all sorts of weather. Um, but yeah, I love to, you know, I was a late starter getting on a road bike, I've always been involved in cycling since my 20s, but actually supporting it and cleaning bikes and things like that. Um, when we bought the bike shop 15 years ago, or just before that, I was actually encouraged to get on, buy, have a, a road bike. So for me, you know, the getting on a road bike in, you know, sort of as a mature lady was quite that fear thing. So I love riding uh, out there with, you know, the wind in your face, it's de-stressing. I love the fact that runners and other cyclists and like golfers, if you go sort of, not through a golf course, but actually a road that crosses, you know, they all actually 
acknowledge you. And I think that's what's nice about it and you appreciate it. So it's good for exercise. It's good as you get older, you know, for agility. Um, when we used to go to Austria and, and bike races uh, abroad, and particularly here, people who are in their 80s and 90s, I have to say it's particularly men, but they can actually ride a bicycle better than they can walk. So if we can get that message over to ladies, I mean, one point that was raised was that if you've got Alzheimer's or something like that, you're actually in the flood to ride a bike when you were young. You've ne you never forget. So it is definitely a great form of exercise and it's actually works out cheaper than gym membership in some cases as well. Uh, you know, and you haven't got to go, you know, drive to the gym, do your exercise and come back home. So it's probably more time efficient, um, but great, great fun and for, for everybody. Well, thanks very much. That's been really interesting. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to add in particular about the conference, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, I think uh, really for York, uh, you know, Kirsten England, Chief Exec, for having the foresight to put on an event, you know, it's the first time there's ever been a cycling and women conference, so that's, that's brilliant as far as I'm concerned, because when I joined the uh, cycle industry 15 years ago, it's, it was very much a male-dominated industry, so there is still that thought around, but that's not just geared to the cycle industry, it could be said about all things. Uh, but, you know, they did a really great job. What's impressed me is that people have come from the south coast and, and the north as well, so people have come from all over at a high level. And it's great to actually realise that there are so many women who are passionate about cycling. I think it, the it's it, broken down the, the boundaries because of Twitter and social media. You can make contact with other women, and there's lots of women who are very passionate about cycling and don't have anything to do with cycling in a job or anything, but they're really into watching like the pro cycling on TV and, and just have a passion for cycling and they cycle themselves, which I think is it, can, it can't be a bad thing, can it? So, with it being the Tour de Yorkshire this weekend, are you going to see any of the stages? And if we're so, where are you going to be? Well, yes, we are. Um, really, you know, thrilled that on Saturday we've been actually invited um, to the stage, uh, the start stage at Selby. So that's stage two. So that'll be amazing. Very exciting for us to be actually at a start because for the Tour de France we ended up at all three finishes. <laughs> um, so it's really good just the buzz around and to be again. It's the inaugural uh, Tour de Yorkshire and it's the first of many, which is, you know, it, it can only do Yorkshire good. You know, I'm a Yorkshire lass and all the TV coverage. And again, uh, everybody's going to be watching it worldwide and it's going to be a brilliant event. You know, you can feel the buzz already. Uh, Any tips for a winner of stage two? <laughs> uh, mm, stage two. Marcel Kittle. <laughs> Clancy said the same thing. So oh, did he? Did he? Yeah. Well, thanks very much for that. That was really, really good. And, uh, thanks for thank you. Time. No, thank you.